Hello and welcome back to my channel. I have yet to be able to figure out a normal way to start a video. It might never happen. So today is gonna be a little bit different in that it's Tuesday, so I wanna share a mystery, but this is a mystery that happened to me and therefore maybe it isn't really a mystery, but it kind of is because it's such a weird story that I feel like it needs to be told. I was originally thinking about doing a video today about the Romanov family, but I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cliche. There is so much on YouTube about the Romanov family. Of course, I would have a slightly different angle, but, um, but you can comment below if you're interested in seeing me do kind of a breakdown of the Romanov family and the execution and all that stuff. I'm a weird nerd about that family, so if you do want to see that, maybe I'll make my that my video for next week. But today we're going to get just a little bit personal. So buckle up people because it's going to be an interesting ride as we journey back to the year of our Lord, 2018. Oh, that was such a simple time, 2018. At this very moment that I'm filming this video, it's July 2020, so it's been a little over two years since this happened. This event, this thing, this interaction, it happened in April 2018 in Sedona, Arizona. I was in Sedona, Arizona in April 2018 for a breathwork workshop, and I had never been to Sedona before. I was really, really excited to go. And it really was awesome. If you watching this have never been to Sedona, Arizona, I highly encourage you to go there. It is an amazing spot, very spiritual, very healing. It's just a great place to go to get some new perspective on yourself and on your life. So I had gone there because there was this breath workshop that was being hosted there that I was very interested in attending. And I went, it was awesome. And, but this thing that happened, it was on the second day of a three day workshop. We had time in the morning before our sessions were gonna start again. So I had like three hours in the morning before I had to be at my next breath workshop. So because it was my first time in Sedona, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go check out some of these vortexes. And the one that I was really drawn to was the Bell Rock Vortex. I will put a picture of the Bell Rock Vortex here. I hope I can get this right, but here it is. It is really cool, really special, and I just knew that that was the one for that day that I had to go check out. So I get to the parking lot, and it's like a tiny, tiny parking lot, and there were no spots. It was kind of early in the morning, which was weird because I thought like, okay, they'll definitely be parking, but I got there and there was already no spots left. So I kind of drove around until I found a spot. And as I was driving around, I noticed there was this like strange older man standing outside of like a very kind of old beat up pickup truck and he was just kind of watching me like he very much like saw me in his orbit and it was like the the energy was there that he was very clearly interested in whoever i was and also i should note like i was definitely alone i i travel alone a lot and this wasn't out of the normal out of the ordinary normal for me to be there by myself so I finally find a parking space and I go up to the trailhead for the Bell Rock Vortex and I see that that same guy, this older guy, who I guess I should describe him, he was probably in his like early 60s with white hair. He had like a white beard and like a kind of bandana over his head. He had this vibe as if he just like left Woodstock in the 1960s and like never recovered or something like he just like stayed in that kind of energy and like I don't know his clothing felt like older um he just had this vibe of like this old hippie dude and all of the bumper stickers that were all over the back of his truck they were all like about bell rock itself and about like random kind of hippie stuff so it was very clear that this guy was also like kind of obsessed with the bell rock vortex so anyway, I am now walking and I see this guy, he's, he's still at his truck and now he has two kind of older ladies there with him 
who um who have clearly like come to meet up with him and the women are probably like in their 50s they look like tourists they look like very just nice regular tourist ladies so i forget about them i go on my journey up the trailhead to the bell rock vortex i had no intention at all of climbing bell rock i know that's like a thing that people do and but I, at that time, had no intention of actually climbing the thing. My goal was just I just wanted to walk around it, just sort of feel the energy, just sort of like bask in whatever vortex energy was going to be bestowed upon me that day. And I spent probably like 20 minutes actually just kind of wandering around. I took some random videos, I like texted my dad, and just kind of wandered around. And then this guy and the two ladies also, let's interlude here because I want to say I forgot this guy's name and I'm actually kind of glad that I did because I don't really want to like fully throw this guy under the bus for what's going to happen later in the story. I just want to tell a story and it happens to revolve around this strange guy. So anyway, he and the ladies are now like approaching me and the guy comes up to me and he says, Hey, so I am a tour guide. I lead people up to the top of Bell Rock and it's free. And uh, all I ask is when you get up there, I'm just gonna take a bunch of pictures of you. It's like, even as I say that now, that like wasn't really how he said it. Like at the time he said it more like, like, oh yeah, we get up there and we just casually take pictures and you get to like keep the pictures and stuff. Like he made it sound like it wasn't, for him, it was more like a casual fun thing for the people who, who go up there. So normally I would never agree to be led anywhere by just like a random dude who just approaches me in the desert. But because this guy had these two women with him and the women seemed really awesome. They were solid, they were, um, yeah, they had like kind of a motherly vibe about them and they seemed really normal and approachable and because they, had such a vibe like they trusted this guy and they were gonna go up bell rock with him i thought you know like i should be open to new adventure and you know if i have this opportunity to be led up bell rock um supposedly safely um then i should just do it but before i said yes i asked him how difficult it would be because i said i'm not a climber this looks like Bell Rock could have like some intense like climbing stuff happening there. And I was like, I just don't know if I can do it if it's like difficult. And this guy, he was like, it's really not difficult at all. There are some spots that, you know, I'm going to coach you through, but otherwise like it's really, it's really not that bad. And the two women, they were both like, yeah, we're not climbers either. So like, if we can do this, then like, you can definitely do this. So I was like, cool, I guess I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna spend my morning. I'm gonna actually get to climb to the top of the Bell Rock Vortex instead of just hanging around the bottom of it. So I felt good. I felt like this was cool. We're with two women, it's also safe. I don't know this guy, he's kind of weird, but whatever. And so he starts leading us up there and like while he starts leading us kind of up the rock in the first part, it's more just like a hike in the first part. He's kind of like bragging about like how well he knows Bell Rock and he climbs it every single day and he knows like all the different routes and like pretty much everything there was to know about this particular vortex. And I thought that was kind of interesting and it gave me more faith in him that like, you know, this was a solid guy. This was someone who he even said like he had a website and that's how these women found him is because he like offers this like thing on like couch surfing or Airbnb or something where like he takes people up for free to um, to the top of this thing and he just likes to share it with tourists and you know all this stuff. But then eventually the hike starts to turn more into like a scramble and a climb. We didn't have any rope equipment because he said like that you can do it um, just just by bouldering you don't need ropes and stuff and he was right but the very first like part where we kind of had to scramble up a wall um one of the women already tapped out like she just realized just from that very first like shelf that we had to scramble up that she realized you know i can't do this i'm gonna go back to the car and we we're like cool i'm glad you know that now and so she left and so then it was just me the other woman and the guy 
So then I think we kind of scrambled up like two shelves. So how it kind of works on that vortex is like, there's a wall and then there's like kind of a shelf area, like a little station. You kind of walk some more, there's another wall that you go up and it's kind of like that. So it's not straight climbing. It's like you go up and then there's like a little area, then you go up again. And it's in each area that you go up is very different. So we finally get to, I think it was like the third major like wall that we had to climb up. And it was, this one wasn't even a wall. It was like a boulder, like crammed into like a wall. So it was like a, like a nook and cranny sort of situation. I'm not a climber, so I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it was like not even a wall. It was just a boulder, very smooth and round, like coming up against a, a rock and you had to put your feet and hands into the crack to kind of get yourself over the boulder. So this is where things start to get a little bit weird with this man. He asked me to go first to try this boulder and crack thing. And he does say this is the hardest part of the whole thing. Like once you can get past this big boulder, um, it's pretty much a straight shot from there. And, um, and yeah, so, but he, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this part without just, going into craziness but because he was very strict and he had like a very like like one way to do it and he only had one way to even explain it like he was like you have to put your foot in the crack and then in one step you have to somehow like hoist yourself over this boulder and he was probably like six feet tall i am five five and I'm also not that flexible, nor am I used to like lifting my entire body over a boulder. So when I get into this like crack boulder situation, I put my foot in the crack where he said to, but then when I kind of lift my other leg, I, I can't get it all the way over like he said. So I kind of just like get on my, like, on my knee and then all of a sudden I'm on like two hands, two knees, like on this boulder. So that just sent him into a freak out. Like he started freaking out at me. He was yelling, he was like, oh my God, you just put yourself in the worst situation. You are fucked now. You are like so screwed. And excuse, excuse my profanity, but this is what he did. He went into total freak out mode because the position I was in, which I agree in hindsight was not good. I was on the boulder and when you're in that position where you don't have anything stable on you anymore, like it's like just knees and hands on the boulder, the minute you start to move, all you do is you start sliding backwards. There's no traction. There's nothing to hold on to. You're just like on this boulder and you can't, you can't move anymore. But his freak out was so not helpful. So I'm like in the hands and knees position and I start kind of yelling back at him like, please stop yelling at me because it is not helpful at all. And he listened, he, he did, but he was fully freaking out. He was no longer like a positive coach. He was like, he was saying, I basically like, I was gonna basically die because I put myself in that position because I was so vulnerable and could fall. But by some miraculous thing, once I got him to shut up, I figured out my own way to get over, to get over the boulder. So I, I, I put a foot back in the crack. I was not in the place I was before, I was a little bit higher. And then I somehow figured out, I don't even know how, like it seriously, it was one of those moments in life where it's like, I can't even recall the memory of how I got over this boulder, but I did. But the thing was that after the woman witnessed this guy, one, like freak out at me for, for not getting through the crack the right way and leaving myself vulnerable on top of the boulder. Um, and then also just seeing how much I struggled with it she was like yeah I'm, I'm out like if if she can't even do it this like younger woman who um so even though i had no climbing experience she viewed me as like a younger woman who like was more like fit or whatever than her um she was like if she can't really do this that well then like i'm definitely out i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go back to the car but after that experience of how difficult it was to get over that boulder and how crazy this guy had acted about it I was, no, I was kind of going into freak out mode. Like I realized now I'm on top of Bell Rock because after that boulder situation, it's only like a couple more shelves that are much easier to scramble up. And then all of a sudden you're on top of Bell Rock and it's this huge hundreds of feet up. I should probably look up how tall it is, but I didn't before making this. And it's huge. And once you get up the side that we climbed up, once you're at the top, the other side, the side that's impossible to climb, it's just like a straight 
shot down and it was it was so impressive and cool but at the same time extremely vulnerable and scary to be up there with this guy I wasn't really feeling safe with and I wasn't really trusting my own abilities at that point like I felt in myself how much I struggled just to get over that boulder and I truly had no idea like how I was gonna get back down like I wasn't I just wasn't sure so we're up there it's just me and the guy there are some other tourists that are like a little bit further away on like an area of the rock that i never walked over to um but this is the point that he just whips out his camera and he starts asking me to like pose in different ways there was also like this interesting like round like structure like almost like this rock shaped hole that was up there and he asked me to like climb into it and he was gonna take all these pictures and at first I did, I like climbed into this hole, even though I was like, I was shaking at that point because I was like, I'm already a little bit freaked out by heights. And then again, like, because I'm up there in this like very unsafe seeming situation, I did what he asked at first, but I was like not, like I didn't even want to move. Like I didn't want to climb higher into like this weird thing. And, um, and so I did that, he took some pictures, but then I was like, I was able to find my voice again. And I told him, hey, you know what? I'm like feeling a little, like weak and just like overwhelmed and I don't know if I really want to take the pictures like I just don't well let me tell you Mr. Man who I don't remember his name had another little conniption fit he got right up in my face and remember this is on top of this huge like mountain and there's a cliff right there and we're just up here in the elements he got in my face and told me that this was my payment to him for allowing him to to take me up this rock and I said um, I didn't realize that like that was the full agreement like when he at the bottom had talked about the picture thing like I said like he didn't make it sound like it was this like tit-for-tat payment thing like you let me take you up the rock and then I take pictures of you and that's how this is gonna go he's made it sound like it was this casual like fun thing that just sort of was gonna happen, you know, just after we got up there because it'd be fun. So when I told him like, you know, I'm just uncomfortable with this, I would rather skip the pictures, he just really freaked out. He was saying that like I was really ungrateful and that, I don't even remember the full thing of what he said, but he was really angry and he ended up storming off. So he kind of like ended it with, well, good luck, figure out your own way back down. Like that was for sure one of the things that he said. And this grown ass man in his 60s with like his weird like Woodstock vibes like leaves. He goes to the other side of the Bell Rock where I think the other tourists kind of were on that side. And he just sort of leaves me up there. So now right here, I'm just gonna include this wonderful weird selfie that I took in the midst of all that. This. I think I took this selfie before he freaked out at me because he's like, okay, we're gonna take pictures now. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna get out my phone and like take a picture. And you can just see in my face that I'm like struggling with like 70,000 emotions like all at once. Oh my gosh. And the weird thing was, so after he left, I just never saw him again. Like I didn't, I don't know if he came down a different way or like what he did but he never appeared again. And that's kind of part of the mystery, I guess. I don't know. I think the bigger mystery is why a grown man feels the need to act that way and why a woman still, still can't just go out, enjoy whatever, nature, whatever she wants without being taken advantage of in some ways. Cause that's what it felt like. It felt like I got kind of tricked and coerced to climb this, this mountain which yes i agreed to thinking it would be like a fun thing but not under this pretense that like i was gonna give him something of me like let him take pictures of me or like do whatever and i also didn't agree to get get yelled at and like cursed at because i wasn't doing it exactly the way that he thought i needed to so it was just weird and so once he walked away i instantly was like okay, okay i need to get down because i am freaked out by the heights it's a huge drop again beautiful but like i'm done so I start trying to make my way down this thing. And that is when things got scary for me. So 
like I said in the in the coming up part so that those first so now going down those first scrambles going down are really not that bad just like they weren't bad coming up but I was quickly brought back to that boulder that I had a lot of trouble getting over and when I got back to that my initial thought was oh maybe I can just slide down I can just sort of like use gravity you know since we're both wanting to go the same direction I can just use gravity to like help me to the to the next shelf but unfortunately gravity is like a rushing raging river and my plan was something much slower so me and gravity were not on the same page and again I'm not a climber so I don't really know anything about climbing up or climbing down and apparently down climbing is you know difficult there's like there's like some different finesse you need to figure out how to get down as opposed to going up so I'm at this boulder I get back on like the hands and knees position like I'm just gonna like allow myself to slide backwards and it's like a six foot drop like over this thing and I just I realized in starting to slide backwards I realized oh my god this is not this is absolutely not gonna work if I fall the six feet and then bounce on the shelf below me and then fall down the next shelf like that would be terrible and I was having all these visions of like I knew I would start falling too fast and I would probably like break a limb or something and then I would be really in trouble and so I start going into like full-blown like panic mode and I don't know about you but for me panic mode is actually very internalized like I wasn't like screaming or anything I could just feel like my heart was racing I had total cotton mouth like all the saliva in my mouth had gone and I was like fully in like, I am stuck up here. Like I have no idea how I'm gonna get down. I don't even know if a helicopter could like come get me because the way the rocks are, they're so like kind of closed in that like, I don't think like anything could like get close enough. And so I was thinking these things, there's nobody else around, at least so I thought. And I am just like, I'm up here trapped with like a crazy man who's like above me. I don't even know what, and I don't know how I'm gonna get down. I'm stuck up here, but then I squashed, is that a word? I squashed my panic a little bit and I remembered that the guy had said that there was some other way up and down that was like a little bit further away, um, but he claimed that wasn't a good way. But like he had said, some people like to try to go that way, but he claimed it was much harder. That was what he thought. But I thought of this and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take a little journey over there and see what happens. So I walk along the shelf, I try to get over to that spot and I was able to scramble down that way and he was such a liar it was a million times easier both up and down because it was flat and even though it was very crumbly on that side it was still like there were so many more handholds and footholds that it was much easier to kind of lower yourself down and um and that's what I did so I got down to the next shelf so next shelf and lo and behold who do I find the second woman the one who saw me try to get over the boulder and how difficult it was that said she was out. She was still there. She was stuck on that shelf as well. She didn't know how to get down. So this freaking bell rock asshole <laughs> has not only abandoned me, in many ways he abandoned this other lady because she was also given no help or instruction on how to get back down. And so she had just kind of been waiting there for me. She said that she could like hear me coming down and so she was just waiting for me. So now I feel like I'm on a rescue mission. Like it's both trying to save me and this woman. And it was, it was not easy to get down guys. It was just not like coming up was a million times easier. I don't know why. I guess it's because like, maybe because he told us the right foothold, we put our foot in it and we just hoisted ourselves. But coming down, there are spots that are just like slides. Like they're just so slippery. The face of the rock is so smooth and slippery that we just it was a lot of falling <laughs> but there was something about finding this other woman again that made me feel like a renewed sense of strength and courage and like i could be a leader and that i i was kind of back in like my nat natural strength set of being able to help people so long story not short we get back to the parking lot we say our goodbyes she finds the other lady who got back fine because the first woman who left she had not even attempted any of the shelves or climbing parts or, or whatever so she was fine but guys i was like severely shaken up i was like what just happened to me this whole thing took like 
three hours. I was late for my workshop because this took way longer than I thought it would. I wasn't expecting to even go up to the top of Bell Rock, but then I wasn't expecting to get abandoned up there and then have to figure out on my own how to like shimmy my way down. I had lots of like cuts and bruises on my knees and hands um, just from all of the sliding. And, um, and we were honestly so, so lucky that we didn't have, uh, me and this woman, that we didn't have like more injuries than like, you know, the, the cuts and bruises because we, if we had fallen farther than what we did, we would have been totally just screwed. So let me try to like wrap this whole thing up and why I decided to talk about this today. So like I said, the Bell Rock Vortex is considered an incredibly spiritual and healing place. And when this first happened to me, this like honestly like kind of traumatic sort of event, I was like really pissed at the rock. Because in my mind, I was like, that was not spiritual. That was weird. There was this strange, mysterious guy who I allowed to take me up there. And I feel like I was tricked and taken advantage of and then abandoned. And yeah, and now I've just got lots of random cuts. So thanks, Bell Rock. But there truly was something so oddly magical about going through all that and proving to myself that I am not only incredibly strong and can figure out how to get myself down a freaking mountain even though I have no climbing experience and no idea what the frick I'm doing, but I can also help others to go through similar things. Like I, I was so, like I said, proud to be able to be a leader to help this woman because I don't know what that woman would have done if I hadn't come back that way like because she really was stuck and she wasn't even making attempts to save herself or whatever you want to call it and it was such a good lesson to show me like how strong I am like what a true badass I can really be and it's not even I'm not, I'm not sharing the lesson just about me I feel like the same is true for you as well like when we're really tested sometimes we get to see who we really are in ways that we didn't know we needed to see and for me, that was one of those moments. And so now I, I look back on that with a lot of gratitude that like I got to experience that. It was very weird. It was very uncomfortable. And I really don't like that guy. He was very wounded apparently that he was acting that way and just being very strange. But, um, but at the same time, like my meeting him put me in a situation that ultimately taught me something good about myself. So where's the mystery in this? I don't know, that life, life is weird. <laughs> life is mysterious. And I don't know what happened to that guy. Obviously, I think he must have like hung out up there for a while. I'm also assuming he's probably like a well-known figure in Sedona or like around Bell Rock because he made it very clear he does that every single day. I mean, that was again in 2018. So maybe it's different now. Maybe he doesn't do it anymore, but he was obviously like this figure who was there every day finding random women to bring up there and then take freaking pictures of them. Was not expecting my day that day in April 2018 to go that way. So mystery, what? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my crazy story and please subscribe. I have a small channel here and I love YouTube. I'm loving making videos. I love watching YouTube videos and I would just love nothing more to be more established on this platform. So if you did enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe and let me know in the comments below your own freaky things that have happened to you. Have you ever been led astray by a strange man in his 60s up a mountain? Maybe, maybe I'm not the only one. So let me know and I will see you guys next time.